Hey guys, uh, thanks so much for coming to study club today. Um, it was the first ever session for BDS1. Uh, I really enjoyed presenting actually. It was kind of nerve wracking because so many people showed up and I was only expecting about 20 people to come because that's how, that's how many normally come. Um, it, like, it's usually quite an exclusive part of the year. It's not everybody, but that's that's good. I mean, it's, it's nice that so many people are interested and um, I think in future we're going to book like a big lecture hall, like, you know, anatomy lecture theatre or something. Or maybe even tower, I don't know. Depends what people like. Um, yeah, so we'll probably book that so more people can fit in and squeeze in, because I know some people went home. Um, I do, I'm really sorry about that. Um, but just in case you wanted um, to know what you missed out on, I'm going to try and cover it again, just really, really quickly, uh, right now. I think I had a couple of things to say before I do that, so... Oh yeah, and can I just apologise for the moving around the rooms, because I was coming late back from clinic, I'd just been with patients, and then um, I was shadowing on the perio clinic. And then um, moving about from the library to Hodgkin to classroom five to classroom one, it was... I'm really sorry about that, I think, because we had no idea that so many people were going to come, so it was just mayhem. And I'm especially sorry to Will, who's on crutches at the moment, who had to travel. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's actually our new social lead for study club for um, BDS1. I did, um, as you can see, the fact he's on crutches now, I did have to talk him into being our new social lead. But, um, no, I'm only joking. It was completely voluntary. Big thank you to Sana and Noor um, for organising it and making the brownies and the bringing cookies and things like that. that. That was really kind of them to make them for you guys. So anyway, so let's get on with bones and joints now. Um, so hopefully everybody should have the bones and joints handout that I made that follows with this lecture. Um, so you have the objectives, just to give you a rough outline of what this lecture is supposed to be about. And there are three types of joints, synovial, cartilaginous and fibrous. <clears throat> and synovial, we started off with, um, they're your shock absorbers. So you have them between your uh, your bones and your legs. Um, so, you know, when you jump and you land on your feet, there's something to absorb the sort of shock and um, it's deformable because of the synovial fluid. So make sure you know the uh, labelling for that, um, for the synovial joint um, and the ends of the bones are covered in hyaline cartilage so make sure you know that layer there in the middle is hyaline cartilage or just cartilage is fine I think and these are your highly movable ones that's why you know for example there's you know in your, in your legs also your TMJ which is about here so um, when we extra orally examine a patient when they come in to the clinics one of the first things that you'll do um, besides just kind of looking at them and seeing is their face symmetrical, if they've got anything not right, you know, any sort of... Oh God, my hair's so flat. Um, have they got any sort of marks or like anything that could be like oral cancer or something like that? You would test their TMJ, so you, you just stand behind them and just like feel their TMJ. Just say, I'm just going to feel your TMJ here and get them to open the jaw. And you might hear a click um, and you can ask them if it's painful and that sort of thing. Another example of a synovial joint is the sternocostal joint, which is between the sternum and the costal cartilages. So hopefully I'll be showing you a picture on screen now of the thorax, which you will cover soon, so don't worry about it if you have no idea what I'm talking about. It will all be explained soon. But essentially you have this middle section, the sternum, attaching at the sides of it are these costal cartilages, which then attach onto the ribs. The ribs come from the vertebral column, all the way back round towards the sternum and then you have the cartilages and then you have the sternum. So where um, these different parts of the rib cage meet, so where the costal cartilages meet the ribs, where the costal cartilages meet the side of the sternum, you have a joint. And uh, these some of these joints are synovial joints and some of them are another type of joint. Um, but that's kind of it for synovial. Um, okay, so synovial joints can be further classed by shape or type of movement. So um, you have like a plane joint where they just come together like a plane. Um, you have ball and socket joint, like when you have your the bone in your arm going into your shoulder. Sorry, that's not really technical. Condyloid joints and saddle joints. And you can see pictures of them there. So um, that gets covered in the thorax anatomy in more detail. So let's not worry about that yet. I've given an example at the top here, costovertebral joints. So in the middle, this pinky 
weird looking structure is a vertebral um, column like a, I think it's called a disc yeah where the ribs come to meet the vertebral column you have costovertebral joints there as they attach onto the, the back of the spine so don't worry about that yet it's, this is just it's because the thing is with these lectures they all interlink and you've only had the one and the lecturer will use all the terminology like synthesis, synovial, blah, 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 and you're just expected to understand it. And you know, it is, it is tricky. This is like the, the hardest bit at the moment. Synovial membrane keeps the cartilage healthy and provides nutrients. And also, I think someone mentioned today that's uh, how the synovial fluid is secreted it's from the membrane into that area in the middle. Um, and then sometimes in synovial fluid, you have a disc. Uh, so, like, as I mentioned in the TMJ, you have um, muscle here called the lateral pterygoid muscle, and then you have your temporal bone, which is about. I'll show I'll show a picture on on the screen. Hopefully that that should make it easier, which um, has the mandible that sort of fits into it, and a, a protrusion from the mandible is called the condyla, and then between that is where the articular disc sits and the. The, the disc is uh, moves with the mandible when you open and close your jaw when you're talking and eating and speaking and and singing and <laughs> everything like that. Um, oh, I, I might have already said this, but yeah, make sure you know that diagram, the sign over joint diagram, because it comes up in the formative and the summative so many times. So you know, you just you need to know that one. Uh, it's easy marks. And then, um, but I didn't bother going into classification of joints because. I think last year Barbara said, um, Mrs. Webb said that we didn't need to know that in that much detail. So I just recommend reading it, reading the, the slides, um, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. The main things that you need to know is the three types of joints, synovial, cartilaginous and fibrous, um, and then just kind of roughly like some examples for each one. So anyway, uh, let's move on to cartilaginous. Cartilaginous, there are two types, synchondroses and symphysis. Synchondroses is another way, it's more um, commonly referred to as just primary cartilaginous joint, it's easier to remember. Primary cartilaginous joint is what you have in, in your growth plates, um, your epiphyseal, epith oh, I cannot speak today, in your epiphyseal growth plates. And this is in, for example, a long bone, you have this layer of cartilage, cart cartilage there. Um, and then another example is costochondral joints, so these are more synchondroses where the costal cartilages meet the ribs. Symphysis is another example of cartilaginous joints, so this is, for example, the manubrio sternal joint. So in the sternum, the sternum is in the middle here, um, you have the manubrium, the body of the sternum and the xiphoid process. And where each of these three bones meet, you have a little joint. And these joints are all examples of secondary cartilaginous joints uh, or symphysis. Symphysis is what you is what it what it's called sometimes. And you also have it in the vertebral column, which is why I've included that there. Um, anything else to say about cartilaginous? Uh, found in the midline of the body. I've just explained that. Found in the vertebral column. I've just explained that. Um, where bodies of the vertebra. Oh, that's it. Vertebral bodies, not discs. Um, sit on top of each other. Um, and also find in the top part of the sternum the manoeuvre, yeah, I've said all this, and apparently between the two halves of your pelvis, yeah. Uh, it allows a little bit of movement. Oh, this is something I forgot to mention. So when you're breathing, your chest wall is moving up and uh, sort of anterior-posterior, and it's moving out laterally, and um, it's also moving up and down as well, so uh, inferior-superiorly. So there's three different directions it's moving in, and um, in order to have this movement, you know, you need to have a little bit of movement in the joints so that they can allow the sternum to rise and fall and move out and, you know, etc. So, yeah, that's important for us for respiration when you're or ventilation. I think that is it for cartilaginous joints. So just to recap, there were two types, um, symphysis and synchondrosis. Um, synchondrosis was in, in the epiphyseal plate and the uh, other one was um, in places like the manubrio sternal joint and the ziphy sternal joint. So hopefully I've got stuff on the screen to help that. Then the third classificational group 
for joints is fibrous. So there's three types of these, sutures, syndesmoses and gonfosis. Uh, sutures you'll recognise as these like wiggly lines that you have on the skull. Um, so if you take like a human skull and where the bones have met they kind of interdigitate and um, form this mesh kind of thing, um, appearance. Um, and they form by intramembranous ossification which is the easy way of making bone and that gets explained in another lecture so don't worry about it but you will know that inside out it's, it's really straightforward it's literally you've got a layer of cells called osteoblasts um, osteo meaning bone bone cells and these bone cells chuck out type 1 collagen forming a collagen matrix and then um, as it moves down the, 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 some of the cells move down and um, they get calcified in the collagen matrix and form osteocytes. So they become, they, they get called osteocytes at that point when they can't move anymore. Kind of like they're stuck in cement. Uh, so that, that, that's the easy way of making bone, just chucking out this collagen, this type one collagen, and then it forms the bone. Um, and that's what happens in sutures. And it's immovable, only occurs between skull bones. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much that. Um, uh, I mean, there's a, something else I can mention, which is the fact that there's different types of sutures. So there's uh, squamous, serrated and denticulate. So kind of straight, wiggly and more wiggly is what I said. Um, like, uh, which is not very technical. Uh, yeah, so there's different types of sutures, but they all form by the same intramembranous ossification. The lecturer for this topic showed you a picture of the fetus skull with a little bit in the middle, um, which was uh, um, an anterior fontanelle. Oh, and there's another one, it's a posterior fontanelle, which is just where the bones don't quite meet. Um, and I think it's just cartilage. Someone asked me, what is that material? And I said cartilage, so I'm gonna check that and put on screen if that was right or not, because I'm pretty sure it's cartilage, but you know, we didn't get taught, or well, maybe we did and I forgot. <laughs> So now we're moving on to syndosmosis, we've covered the first type of fibrous joint, sutures. The next type of fibrous joint is syndosmosis, which is what you have in your um, arm. So between your radius and your ulna, you have this interosseous membrane or interosseous ligament. You can have a couple of different names, but same thing, interosseous something. Um, the radius goes on top, ulna goes under, you, you, if you can see what I mean. Um, and... Um, it just basically the, the the ligament the fibrous joint there it stops the two from moving away from each other and also it stops them from getting too close um so i think there's a little bit of like limited movement around that um yeah a little bit of movement um then for gonfosis so i said that's just the tooth fitting into its socket so um you have a tooth surrounded by encapsulated sort of by um, alveolar bone and then the gingival tissue on top of that and um, between the cementum which is this outer layer on the tooth on the root surface from sort of the the neck area down um, there's something called the periodontal ligament which um, is in these kind of as these fibers and um, actually they go in many different directions but the main ones oh god this is getting so technical are these things called oblique fibres and they, they do this sort of particular anger and it basically anchors the tooth from the cementum into the between those two between between the cementum and the alveolar bone okay so just to give you like a rough idea um, that's an example of gonfosis and I think it's the only one in the human body let me just check it I don't have anything else to say about gonfosis oh okay so the uh, periodontal ligament is a series of collagen fibres so again collagen um, and the importance of that is that when you bite into something, the collagen acts as a shock absorber, allowing a little bit of movement. Okay. Uh, also, bone is dynamic, so when you put pressure on bone on one side, it starts to grow um, on the other, like deposit um, on the other side. So that's kind of how orthodontics works, so you'll apply pressure onto the tooth. The pressure will kind of travel to the alveolar bone, and cause resorption at one end and then de deposition at the other end. So that's kind of how that works. Oh, I've not mentioned about endochondral ossification. When I said about primary um, cartilaginous joints, the synchondroses, you have cartilage laid down first and then you have bone laid on top. So cartilage lays, is laid down 
like a scaffold someone used that term which is really nice actually and then the blood capillaries kind of like invade and provide the bone cells that excuse me will lay down the bone and that's kind of how it works um yeah so cartilage then bone endochondral ossification it's a bit more complicated than intramembranous but again you have a whole lecture yeah i think you have two lectures on that so buckle up guys um so much more fun stuff to come and that's kind of all of it. I'm, I'm not going to go into the movements, like the gliding movements and the angular movements, because that is literally just a matter of reading it. Um, I don't think you get tested on it. Like, I don't remember ever seeing a question on it. But if you want to just be safe, have a read of it. The information is all there. Yeah, so anyway, hopefully a schedule will come out soon on the BDS1 Study Club. So you guys will know what lectures that Sana and Noor, your new BDS1 presidents, what topics they want to cover uh, and then you can put yourself forward to come up and, and do a presentation like I did today and um, yeah it's, it's just it's a really good experience and it's um, nice to get to know other people and just create a good social study environment um, and maybe go out afterwards and yeah make some make some new friends so because that's what it's all about it's not it's not all about studying it's all about um, you know making friend good friends this year and enjoying what kings and, and london has to offer so as i said any questions let me know and i hope you have an amazing week so see you later guys